All right, just a little bit after 9 a.m., this is Eric Hayden with the National Weather Service in Moorhead City. Sarah Jameson has joined me again. She will talk about the hydrology and flooding aspect. You should have this email in your um, uh, inbox. If not, again, you can find it on our website right at the top of the uh, headline of the day, weather.gov slash MHX. Top wind speeds have come down with Florence, um, but our main message with this briefing and update and through social media is the overall impacts for our area still remain the same. We don't want folks to uh, let their guard down. A tornado watch has been issued and is still expecting extreme rainfall mounts with uh, major river flooding likely. Main points, life-threatening impacts are expected. Again, wind, storm surge, flooding rain, and now we have that tornado watch for tornadoes today. Summary of greatest impacts. Largely unchanged, high confidence, extreme impacts from rainfall, and also storm surge, and then uh, extreme impacts from wind. And you'll notice the moderate confidence in there. That's still, again, uh, some slight fluctuations in the track will um, you know, really determine which county or what part of the county gets the extreme winds uh, or not. But again, uh, impacts high across the board. That is uh, largely unchanged. Hurricane warning remains in effect. That is unchanged. You'll notice uh, Tierra County's inland from our forecast area uh, to our friends up out of the Wakefield or Richmond office and then over toward Raleigh, uh, those folks under tropical storm warnings. Here's the latest track. I'm not going to focus on the track too much because we're getting so close and I, I don't want to lose um, perspective. This thing's going to wobble south or, or um, north you know in the coming hours landfall still sometime friday but notice the slow movement very very slow but you know we talk about this all the time the cone shows only the most probable path for the center and that impacts extend well away from it well this graphic shows you that orange shading you see that big big circle those are the tropical storm force winds which extend out almost 200 miles from the center that darker orange you see uh, that smaller circle, those are hurricane force winds and they extend out 80 miles from the center. So again, that's why all week we talked about, you know, of course we're going to talk about the track, um, but the impacts are still going to be significant across our area regardless of that final track. Um, and again, that's just really emphasizing how large of a storm this is. Those impacts will be felt well, well away from the center. Mo most likely time of arrival for um, winds with um, Florence with regards to tropical storm force winds, it's today. We've already seen some gusts over 50 miles per hour at Cedar Island and also Ocracoke. I'll hop out of our briefing for a second. Um, you can see this is our uh, radar out of Moorhead City. You can clearly see the eye to the south and east. But the reason why I wanted to point this out, and for folks that may see this on YouTube or this is going to be shared throughout the day, this is a 9 a.m. briefing. So this is uh, current right now. You can see some of the outer bands coming on shore now. We will likely begin to see some much, much stronger seas come ashore. So just things are just starting uh, in our area as we speak. Wind speed probabilities, tropical storm force in 50 knot, largely unchanged. Uh, same with the hurricane force wind speed probabilities. Again, these could shift a little bit southwest, northeast, depending on uh, the final track, but these are largely unchanged. Storm surge threat, uh, still expecting uh, possibility and potential for extreme impacts uh, along our coastline, especially southern Onslow um, County, Carteret County, up the Newport River, uh, Noose, Pamlico, uh, those areas um, still expecting extreme uh, storm surge. Uh, and because of that, uh, storm surge warnings remain in effect. That is unchanged as well. Potential storm surge map, uh, still same numbers, 9 to 13 feet above ground um, up to Cape Lookout. This does include the Noose and Pamlico River. From the Lookout up to Ocracoke, 6 to 9 feet. Um, and then from Ocracoke up to Salvo, Rodanthe, kind of that area, four to six. And once you get north of uh, Rodanthe and, and that area, it drops off to two to four feet. Again, this is potential storm surge. Um, but those values, again, are unchanged from the briefing from yesterday. I'll just zoom into the map just a little bit. Again, this is a clickable PDF. So if you uh, have this email in your inbox, uh, you can be doing the same thing that I'm doing. But just showing you Onslow Bay and, and New River up through the Jacksonville area, um, White Oak River, um, Newport River. 
So just trying to show you some of the impacts of surge across our area, these values, uh, the reds, uh, greater the potential uh, for greater than 9 feet, so that falls in line with the 9 to 13 feet uh, new burn area. And again, I encourage you folks to um, you know, zoom in uh, to your local area and kind of see um, some of the, the messaging that we've been giving uh, and then in Pamlico. So we'll hop back to the, the presentation. Wind threat highest again toward the coastal counties uh, where the, the expected landfall will be near. Our maximum sustained winds um, approaching 100 miles per hour, southern Onslow County, a gust above 90, the southern part of the area. I went by that first graphic a little fast on purpose. Uh, these are what the current forecast is. Um, this will shift around a little bit. It's just to try to give you an idea of the magnitude of the wind. I expect the magnitude to be highest, central southern Onslow County, Carteret County, lower up toward Washington um, and, and the northern part of the Outer Banks. Um, but that gives you an idea of the magnitude. So with that, widespread power outages expected, issues with debris and the roadways um, because of the numerous uh, trees that will be snapped and uprooted. So I'm going to turn it over to Sarah, talk a little bit about the flooding threat, and then we'll touch base uh, after her discussion with the tornado threat. So here's Sarah Jamison with the update on flooding. Okay, thank you, Eric, and good morning, everybody. Um, well, we are not exactly changing uh, much in regards to our uh, flood risk to the area. We are highlighting um, mainly southern areas as extreme. They will be closer to the center of Florence, which means they will be exposed even longer to the heavy rain bands. Um, so those areas we are expecting a lot more rainfall potential. North of that, in that area uh, labeled high, we're going to be receiving more rain band. Uh, rainfall, which means it's going to be a little bit more sporadic, not as broad brushed or as much intensity. Uh, but I can tell you just the rain bands that we're monitoring offshore that Eric showed you, we are seeing very heavy rainfall, so the risk for flash flooding um, still remains very high across all areas. And that will be a long fuse event, or excuse me, that will be uh, throughout the entire duration of this storm. Okay, here is the rainfall forecast, the latest one issued uh, early this morning. Um, the trend as, um, you know, showing 20 to 30 inches on this map to say that the trend is downward um, is, is a bit of a stretch, but um, I would say that I'm cautiously optimistic for those areas, again, that were highlighted in red in the northern part of our forecast area. Um, that perhaps we may keep it under that foot of rainfall that we were worried about. You know, if we can get, you know, six inches or so, that would cause some problems, but perhaps not um, that extremely elevated risk of flash flooding uh, that we've been so worried about. But we're not out of the woods. Um, as Eric's been emphasizing, slight deviations, shifts, uh, perhaps a persistent rain band can quickly turn things around up there. So uh, please remain cautious. We have the flash flood watch in effect for the entire area just for that uncertainty alone. Um, these estimates are based on our, our um, you know, best consensus on where the heaviest rainfall is going to be. But uh, for many of us, this is not our first tropical system, and we know that the rainfall amounts can be quite spurious at times and not exactly broad brush like we're seeing here. However, that being said, um, you know, the longer duration of the rain bands in those southern counties is still keeping the high risk of one to two feet, upwards of potentially 30 inches of rainfall. Um, we do believe that 30 inches is going to be localized, but I can tell you one to two feet of rainfall uh, will cause problems, that's for sure. Um, so we've been really, really highlighting the extreme risk for flooding, flash flooding, and then subsequent river flooding especially in those areas, I would say, um, again, that were highlighted in that extreme flood risk areas. Okay, looking at um, our river flooding in particular. Now, this will be the second part of this storm. The first part will be the extreme rain, the flash flooding that will occur uh, maybe as early as later this afternoon and continuing probably through Saturday evening. Once the storm either pushes west or starts to subside, um, we're going to have to turn our attention to the rivers. Based on those rainfall forecasts that we were showing, this is what we are expecting uh, for the Northeast Cape Fear River near Chincapin. 
Um, the rainfall forecast does exceed the 99 Dennis and Floyd scenario, so that being the case, um, it's not surprising that we're starting to see our forecast favoring a record stage. Um, slight deviations in those rainfall amounts, though, and, and hopefully we'll see that come down. But either way, we are several feet above major flood stage. So there are going to be a lot of problems in the Duplin County area um, as a result of that extreme rainfall. And they're not alone. Unfortunately, that whole swath of extreme flood risk um, extends into the Trent River and Jones County, portions of uh, all of Onslow County, portions of Craven County. Uh, Duplin County and even potentially up there in Lenore County though there's less certainty in that region but I would say the areas that I have checked here are probably the most threatened um, even if it's a river site that we don't have gauges on I would expect them to all be raging um, by the time um, we get into the weekend for sure okay a little bit of a focus on uh, chinkapin uh, again record flooding is possible possible. We'll be cautiously optimistic that we don't get that rainfall, but right now the, the forecast still favors that one to two feet range. Um, again, that will cause devastating flooding. I want to remind people, that especially for our river forecast points, if you're familiar with those on our AHAPS webpage, uh, you can get inundation maps. So you can see, like I've got displayed right here, the extent of the flood waters into the community if we have one of those forecast gauges in that region. So again, I would encourage you to go and check out those those inundation maps if you can okay Oop, pardon me okay new river near gum branch um we don't have a forecast for this location uh, but um given the similar situation with chinkapin we're looking at one to two feet of rain that will likely push them towards a record flooding as well and that would result in probably Highway 24 flooded as well as numerous, numerous roads and communities flooded. So again, very bad situation shaping up for, for that whole region. Jones County, um, record flooding is possible. Um, you know, Floyd was pretty significant. Uh, we're hoping it won't quite get to that level in the Trenton area. Um, Pollocksville, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. Uh, we're already seeing Pollocksville approaching flood stage, and that is basically just from the wind, and the rain hasn't even gotten here yet. So you throw on the fresh water on top of a very long, drawn-out, prolonged wind and storm surge event, and the combination of those two makes it a little less predictable, um, and that is concerning uh, because just along with the fresh water, we're expecting major flooding, and then you throw on some storm surge addition to that and things you know could be approaching that Floyd level if uh, areas were impacted by Floyd I would certainly be concerned about this event hopefully everyone has already taken action and is in a safe location but they should be aware that even once the rain stops uh, we're gonna have to be concerned about river flooding and we don't want people to suddenly jump out of their homes and start traveling back um, you know and crossing these dangerous areas so again we're gonna have to be very clear on the messaging that once the storm has passed people are gonna have to be very cautious about where they travel given the probably uh, expected numerous road closures in the area so those are the areas that we expected to be hardest hit um, going a little bit further north we're into the newest river basin now um, the rainfall, like I said, cautiously optimistic. It's coming down maybe a little bit less than a foot of rainfall. This forecast that we have showing moderate flooding at Kinston is based off about a foot of rainfall. And um, that's kind of been holding steady. So, um, you know, we can, you know, moderate flooding can cause some issues, but again, nothing like what we saw with Matthew. So, uh, but we're not out of the woods. Again, slight deviation, slight shift, and that could certainly change. Uh, Hookerton, same thing, cautiously optimistic. Right now we're forecasting minor flood with um, a forecast with about eight and a half inches of rainfall in it. Uh, we're gonna closely monitor that, but uh, you know, we're, we're really hoping that we can keep that into that minor flood stage. So if you're concerned about that junction of uh, where the Contentia and the Noose meet, what does that mean if Kinston's in uh, moderate and Hookerton's in minor? I would expect um, that whole region between Grifton and Tickby um, to see flooding. I'm hoping that we can keep it around a moderate level and not anything more severe. Um, but again, the whole region is susceptible to some major flooding. Again, highlighting just some of the main access roads that are likely to flood. Again, this is gonna cause some problems when all those people who evacuated decide to come back. Once the storm leaves, we're gonna to have to make sure they realize that a lot of the access routes 
could potentially be closed, especially down here near the southern, co southern coast. Um, so just once again, throwing out there, I highlighted a few of the probably more susceptible rivers, um, but again, with rainfall, it could just as easily push a little bit more uh, to our northern areas, hitting the Roanoke, hitting the, uh, the Tar River Basin, which I didn't show a forecast for. I know those in Greenville are concerned about the potential flooding there. Right now, based on our rainfall forecast, um, things look to be maintaining themselves. You know, it shouldn't reach that um, major flood stage. Um, but I'm cautiously optimistic, I'll just say that. I, I would say that the threat of the um, Matthew-type flooding has really gone down, but the threat for major flooding still exists. I would say high and moderate, maybe low and major at this time, and then we'll just see how the trends continue. So again, hopefully everyone is already um, in a safe place and should just be prepared uh, for the after effects once uh, Florence pushes off. And I'm going to pass it back over to Eric. All right, we'll wrap things up here. Uh, we mentioned um, a couple days ago the tornado threat. Now that we're starting to get some of the outer bands uh, coming ashore, potential for several tornadoes. Um, want to con continue to remind folks that decided to stay and shelter in place, have a way to get these warnings. Tropical tornadoes are very, very quick in terms of uh, when we see them on radar or the ro rotation for them on radar and issuing a warning. So. Uh, having a way to, to receive a warning is crucial for those folks that stayed behind. Uh, tornado watch in effect um, for our entire area, uh, and this is valid until tonight at 9 o'clock. Uh, usually you don't see watches for more than a couple of hours, uh, but that is because of the landfalling uh, hurricane of Florence. Our next PDF briefing will be by 6 o'clock this afternoon or this evening. Uh, we will send you another um, We'll do another webinar here at 1.30 this afternoon, but the next updated slides will be at least by this evening. You can always get that information on our website, but you folks should all be on the email list.